Good evening. Uh, today we're going to be talking about John Donne's A Valediction Written Morning. Um, John Donne was a poet um, during the whole early 1600s, and this particular poem was written in 1611 or 1612. We're not particularly sure, but it was definitely on the eve of him um, leaving to go to Europe on official business. Um, he was, or John, was considered a pioneer of the metaphysical um, style of poetry. Um, I had to look this one up because I wasn't really sure what all of this meant. I actually, having read through the poem initially, I was very confused, which is kind of why I wanted to dive deeper into this one and really flush it out more. Um, but metaphysical poetry um, is described as, um, going off of this article, the poets, metaphysical poets, use their work, uh, or see their work as a blend of emotion and intellectual ingenuity characterized by conceit or wit, uh, that is, by the sometimes of violent yoking together of apparently unconnected ideas and things so that the reader is uh, startled out of his complacency and forced to think through the arguments of the poem. It's less concerned with expressing feelings than with analyzing them. Um, that is something that was stuck out very clearly to me, uh, going into it. I originally read the poem, and like, it's forbidden morning, so obviously you start it off and you see it as sad, and, um, you see this great, like, death of, like, uh, a revered person, and how does that connect to this idea of, like, feeling at home with a person or feeling a center or connection to that person. Um, I was of the kind of thinking it's more along the lines of, okay, so somebody of societal or cultural um, significance dies or leaves for some reason, like a king or um, a legislator. And that's the morning that we're talking about. But by the end of the poem, we can kind of see that it is more about an intimate relationship that the poet is feeling towards his wife. Um, this was written um, on the occasion of him going uh, with um, Sir Thomas Egerton um, overseas to Europe on official business on behalf of the English government. So in a way, we see him kind of taking on those roles of, you know, that more societal or cultural context. But we see his departure from his wife in a much more intimate way and like understanding the what what he was doing, why he was leaving helps us kind of piece the two together. Um, he traveled for work, um, and was always concerned about his wife, who, um, was, by all intents and purposes, constantly pregnant. She had 12 children, five of which did not survive to adulthood, and passed away during childbirth, um, of, with their 12th child, um, shortly before, um, John was kind of pushed into a place of um, changing career paths and um, becoming, um, I guess he was a clergyman in the Church of England, I guess is the best way of explaining that one. Um, so he took orders for the Church of England. Um, after that, his poetry kind of dipped off, and we don't know a lot about that, but he, he did um, continue to write, um, and a lot of his works were not published until after his death, um, and were really meant more for personal use and, and enjoyment, really. Um, so this particular poem, like, understanding the context of how he was, um, viewing this departure from his wife, 
on a physical level, but knowing that they were always going to come back together emotionally, knowing that the love and the connection that they had as a couple was strong enough to keep them grounded and um, united as a couple um, helps us understand how he was um, he viewed his relationship with his wife and what the context of the poem is more deeply. Understanding a metaphysical poet um, and the different um, terminologies and phrases and um, structure that they use also helped me understand more clearly what or how to read into the poem and how to interpret it. So that is John Donne's uh, A Valediction Forbidden Morning. <laughs>